decided that she would go on and remain in Moab. Moab was a place that comes from the incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughters. So it was a place that was rooted in sexual idolatry. Understand that. But Ruth said, no, where you go, I'm going to go. Where you lodge, I'm going to lodge. Your God should be my God. Your people should be my people. So I submit to you that what Orpah did was return to the logical place, what worked in the past to get her a man. But Ruth did the illogical. Now you got to realize there's a lot of people when it doesn't seem to be going like they think, then they return to that logical place. Let me tell you something, sisters. Anything it takes to get him, it's going to take that to keep him. And whatever you got, I mean, I know you might be all that in the bag of chips, but whatever you got, somebody else got it better. So even though you all that in the bag of chips, somebody else is not only a bag of chips, they the dipped, they got the hips, and they ain't going to give them no lip. And on top of that, they know how to flip his big. Y'all ain't helping me in here. So you don't even want to go there. I submit to you that the story turns the corner. And the long and short of it is Ruth and Boaz come together. You've heard of Boaz. Let me just tell you very quickly that there is only one letter difference between Ruth and the word rut. And there's only one letter difference between Boaz and Bozo. Now, you don't want to be a rut, and you don't want to end up with a bozo. The Bible said she happened upon the field of Boaz. That word happened means by chance. But how many of y'all realize this wasn't by chance? This was a divine connection. This was not a flesh connection. This was not a prophet lie connection. When I say prophet lie, see, I believe in the prophetic ministry. I'm going to be prophesying in a few minutes, but I want to tell you something. A lot of us have been prophet lied into wrong relationships. Years ago, a woman wrote me before I got married and told me God showed me that I was going to be her husband. I wrote her back and said, Sister, the only problem is that he didn't confirm it through me. Man got up and said, I see your, your wife, and she looks like this, and she looks like that, and she's going to be all this. I got a prophecy like that over 20, I said 23 years, I've been married 19 years. I've been saved 23 years. And I got a prophecy, and this person stood up. Lady was about, I don't know, maybe six foot five, and and had about two teeth on the side of her mouth, played a ukulele, I can't get no help in here. Looked like she fell out the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. And ran up talking about, God told me this is my husband. I said, the devil is a lie. Come on now, God ain't gonna give you nothing you can't stand to look at. Can I preach for a few more minutes? I know y'all kinda quiet, but if y'all don't mind, I will preach in a minute. I remember hearing the story. I heard them singing so powerfully this morning. And I remember hearing the story of a person that got up to sing one night in church. It's a woman, she sang. I mean, she showed enough sang. She sang until the power of God came in. Church was all over. The man walked up to her and said, dear, you sang it. I, I just feel like you're supposed to be my wife. She said, really? He said, yep, you're supposed to be my wife. Anybody sing like you're supposed to be my wife? And he said, I want to get married right now. And see, she had settled for nothing so long she now was willing to settle for anything. She was waiting for that knight in shining armor to come along and ride her off into the golden sunset. I mean, you know, most of the time when you do that, you end up cleaning up after the horse. So they got married, and they got home, and she took off her wig, took off her eyelashes, pulled out her teeth, and by the time she finished, he looked at her, he said, sing, woman, please sing. Don't murder nobody while they're under the anointing, because the anointing make everybody look good. Y'all ain't helping me in here. Drunk folk cannot tell what. Don't murder nobody because you like the way they speak in tongues. Tongues don't pay no bills. You wind up with a bozo. The Bible said that she happened upon the field of Boaz, and he was a mighty man of wealth. He had money. Say money. money. Now, how many of y'all realize if the money is funny, ain't nothing else right? I know y'all don't like that, but if ain't no money, no honey. You can't have no honeymoon without some honey, and how you gonna have some honey without no money? So he eligible, but he ain't qualified. The name Ruth means beauty, personality, and glamour. And I believe her name was prophetic of who she was. And the name Boaz means strength and might and valor. And I want to submit to you very quickly that 
This man loved her at first sight. I remember one time this lady was submitted to counseling and she said to me, Pastor, he loved me. He always, he always asked me to eat. Always asked me to go out to eat with him. He, you know, all the time, always asked me to go eat. He, he loved me. I, sister, I said, Sister, have it ever dawned upon you he loved to eat? Help me, Holy Ghost. When you look at this text, you'll discover that the Bible says very quickly, because I can't really preach it at length, but the Bible says that he protected her physically because he commanded the men not to touch her. Number two, he provided economically for her because he commanded them to leave handfuls of purpose. Number three, he became like a patriarch. He took patriarchal measures, or in other words, he became like a father because he called her daddy. Number four, he became like a priest to her because it talks about how he extended favor. The word priest is from a Latin word pontifice, which means a bridge. And he became a bridge and not a barricade to her next level. Number four, he began to praise her because the Bible said he declared, blessed be thou. In other words, he understood that if I appreciate her, I'll never depreciate her. Number six, he began to pay the price or pay attention to her because it says how he sufficed her. At least two different times the word sufficed or satisfied. He paid attention to her. He paid the price for her. Number seven, he began when he became to the point of interest, he began to pursue proper channels to have her hand in marriage. And he took it to the city elders and he became a kinsman redeemer. Not only that, but he married her and the Bible says they had a child. So I like to submit to you lastly that he practiced not safe sex, but saved sex. And understand that they began to release into the earth what is known as a heritage, what's passed from one generation to another, and also genetics. You can refuse your heritage, but you cannot refuse your genetics. As a person from Africa or wherever you're from, you can refuse that particular heritage and not even be identified with it. But you can't refuse your genetics, your genes. And you will discover that she comes out of the lineage of Judah and Tamar, whose son was named Pharaz. Ten generations later, the last chapter of the book of Ruth, Ten generations later, you'll find that David was born. Now, what's significant about that? Because the Bible says that the bastard child should not enter the sanctuary. The child who does not have illegitimate circumstances in which he was conceived cannot inherit or enter the sanctuary until the tenth generation. And so after Judah committed the sin with Tamar, ultimately taking her to be his wife, ten generations later, here comes David. And so what's the first thing the devil tries to do with David? Is try to get sexual sin back into the lineage, the line age, the lineage. And see, what a lot of us don't understand is the problems that we have come from the line age or the lineage. God have mercy. I want you to understand that when I begin to talk about Ruth and when I begin to talk about Boaz, I'm talking about a godly ordained couple that God raised up. Ruth became a mighty woman because of her steadfast commitment to excellence. Boaz became a mighty man because of his. What is Boaz? Boaz is a lion king. What is Bozo? He's a lion king. Boaz is an eagle. Bozo is a vulture. Boaz is a legend in his own time. Bozo is a legend in his own mind. Boaz is a BMW. He's a brother that don't mind working. But Bozo got a first of the month mentality. Help me, Holy Ghost. Boaz will spend time with the baby and call you sugar baby. But Bozo wants to be baby. Boaz will give himself, but Bozo is stuck on himself. Boaz will raise the seed, but Bozo will spill the seed, just like Onan did and God slew him. I want you to understand, you got to realize a man is so potent in each one of his releases. He releases about 180 to 200 million spermatosa. That's almost the entire population of the United States. God made man in his image, and God doesn't want his seed spilled in the street because God is omnipotent, man's potent. Because when you spill your seed in the street, you become like a bozo. Ruth, the difference between her and Rut is that Ruth can cook, but Rut can eat. Ruth, she's into being loved, but Rut is into being laid. Ruth is into content but Rudd is into style. Ruth wants to operate under proper covering, and that's why she wants male companionship. She wants commitment and relationship, but Rudd, she's into transient, temporal things like hair, 